I found it like I was in a tension. Is this really a sin? But then after the act, I feel so guilty. I feel so dirty. I feel like an abomination. And I'm like, what is going on? At this point, I'm already addicted. So I'm trying to stop it and I cannot. As you can already see from the title of this video, you already know what the video is about. And I want to be raw, honest, open and transparent with you because I want to give you the gift of my vulnerability. I am aware if this is your first time watching, I'm glad to have you here. And if you are a returning viewer and you've already subscribed to this channel, thank you so much for coming back to watch today's video. God has been nudging my heart to speak on this and it was as if God is saying, there are people that are struggling with this right now and they need this message. So it's not about you, it's about them. And bringing this out here, I know it's something that's so vulnerable to just put it out there. I was addicted to masturbation. I literally grew up in church and I've been in church all my life, but when you want to talk about these things about sexuality, sometimes it is very easy for us to wear the religious cloak and look perfect before people because, especially when it has to do with the addiction of masturbation, since it's a secret sin, nobody would even know until you tell them, unless you tell them, or unless you are being caught. So I struggle with this and let's get to where did this start? So growing up, I've been exposed to some seeds of this perversion. You know, at the time that I was a little boy, I was opportunity to see a blue film. You know, it's called porn now, but then it was called a blue film. Like growing up, that's the language we termed it because if you look at the screen, it was always blue and not as if my parents had it at home, but I saw it at a neighbor's place. That planted a seed. I've been in church, like I said, you know, I love God and all of that. But then I am a human being and I have sexual feelings like anybody would have. So growing up, becoming an adolescent, I already have these seeds that were planted. Being a young boy, I had this friend that was older than me and I've seen him masturbate before because I bathed with him, you know, I saw him masturbate then and it planted a seed. At first it was like, kind of like, why would he do that? You know, it, it was awkward. That was the first time I even saw such an act, but then it didn't ring a bell. And then I've gone through a series of things with abuse and all of that. And then my sexuality is real. So going back to the church perspective, the church clearly talks about sexual sin, which is fornication and adultery. Clearly, that was what was clearly stated and talked about and preached to the young people, preached to the adults, do not engage in adultery. For the young people, for the single people, it was do not fornicate. So right here, any other thing that you might do might seem safe. So get where I'm coming from. I'm not trying to say that masturbation is a good thing, but then when I started practicing it, it didn't ring a bell that it was bad. Because at first, nobody preached about it. Like it was never talked about when I grew up and when I engaged in it. Nobody talked against it either. So I'm trying to give you my background because I know coming out to make this video, some people will come to say, no, it was because of your religious inclination and all of that. That is why you were feeling guilt. That is why you were feeling that way. Before you get to that, since I came up with these teachings, I love God, like I said, and I did not want to do anything that would make God angry with me because I felt like if I even get to make a mistake and go wrong, God will be angry with me and I'm trying to get God to love me. That was my mindset. And then it means if I fell, I have failed God. And which means God will not end up loving me again. So I try to avoid the stated sin, which is fornication. I try to avoid it with you know, the best I could. Yeah, God helped me with it. Try to avoid it. I wasn't married, so adultery wouldn't be the case. But now when I was introduced to masturbation, it felt like a safe option for my sexual needs. It felt so safe because I'm not going to get anybody pregnant. I'm not going to contact STD, gonorrhea, whatever disease. It feels like a safe sex. 
I'm not hurting anybody. I'm not going to break anybody's heart. So it was so painted that it was so safe. And I practiced it not like it was just an occasional thing that, okay, I would practice it occasionally. And since already I believe it was safe because such true scripture, there's nothing in the Bible that says masturbation is bad. Now that is it. That was me until later in time, I got choked in it. Like I got addicted. Now, in all of this, like I said, the seeds were already planted. And even as I was growing up, I've been seeing pornographic materials. Not as if I wasn't a heavy person on pornography. I did not masturbate using pornography mostly, but I've seen pornographic materials. So this perversion is already been planted in my mind. And I've watched a few pornographic materials. I could remember this Symbian and this Symbian phones that came out and then I would be trying to download games. So for anyone that would know, I would dare go to WAPTRIG, www.waptrig.com or wapking.com to go get games. Then in that process, I would see these pop-ups, you know, XXX. I wouldn't know what it was. So then I would just click. And then where is it leading to? It led to porn. It led to all those things. And then I would see it and it, it's luring. It's captivating. To me, I'm a young person. My, my, my flesh wanted everything I saw there. It was moved. I've, I would try to go out immediately and it's kind of like I'm being forced in. I'm being plucked in, literally. So I'm just being so raw and real with you here. It was a struggle. Like I said, I was not heavy on watching porn. In fact, I had friends that had porn in their phone and they were proud to have it. They were okay to have it. But that to me was something like it was a no-no. I wouldn't get porn, pornographic materials personally. I would not want to have it because I knew if I would stumble on it, it I knew the effect it had on me. So already that one clearly was wrong to me. But then before I continue in this story, let me clarify this because growing up, I know a lot of people had this mindset that porn, because they called it adult movie, many Christians fall into the wrong belief that porn is meant for married people, that porn is good for marriage, that is meant for marriage. So it was kind of like this idea that, you no, know, you are a young person, do not watch porn, it's not for you, you are single, do not watch porn, it's not for you. And it, they made it look like it was safe for marriage, which is not, because the perversion that it brings doesn't make it safe for anybody, whether in marriage or in singleness. So already that mindset would get a single person to say, okay, since it's safe for marriage, let me start preparing and let me start learning so that when I get married, I will know what to do, get the idea. So, but then all of this, I just wanted, I just needed to clarify that because so many people might be in, you know, ignorance thinking porn is good for marriage. Now, when did this masturbation turned to an addiction and how did it happen i happened to see myself being pulled to masturbate like i've been masturbating and there was no guilt in it but before i knew i was kind of plucked into it so badly that i cannot even resist i thought that at first i thought that i would just stop it whenever i want to stop it if i want to stop it i will stop it i couldn't let go i started searching how can I let go of this thing? And as a then, I think, is it early 2013, 2014 or so, if I'm not wrong, I did not see a lot of materials that spoke against it. Instead, they spoke in favor of it, that it is fine, it's good, it's good for your health as a man, you need to release the semen, the sperm, and all of that. And it's crazy, you know. So I was just like, what do I do? I search all the preachers' names that I would get to know. Are they preaching against this or is there anything? Because, like I told you from onset, there's nothing on my mind in line with scripture that says that it is wrong. Yeah. So the guilt wasn't coming from a place of religious teaching because they did not ever mention it. They did not ever speak a word against it. All they talked about was a relation of sex between a boy and a girl or two married people that are not married to each other. So adultery and fornication, like clearly. So they never talked about masturbation. Neither did they talk against it. 
and other sexual sins that the scripture clearly mentions, they did not really mention those things. I found it like I was in a tension. Is this really a sin? But then after the act, I feel so guilty. I feel so dirty. I feel like an abomination. And I'm like, what is going on? At this point, I'm already addicted. So I'm trying to stop it and I cannot. I was so afraid to stay alone. Because when I'm alone, it's now I'm idle. The next thing my mind would go to, go masturbate. When I get into the bathroom, you know, it's an easy route to masturbate. Get into the bathroom, I will use the soap to masturbate and every other thing that I can get my hands on just as a lubricator to masturbate. But then it will feel like I'm, I'm choked up in this. I'm caught up in this thing. And then the scripture that I love so much, I say I love this because it's insane to say I love this. But then why did I love it? It felt like a comforting scripture to me. The things that I don't want to do, this is what I see myself doing. And the things that I would like to do, I cannot do it. I'm trying my best to stop this because the things I would like to do is to stop doing this thing. And I cannot. And then Paul said, woe is me. Like, oh, wretched man I am. And I said, yeah, that's me. That's me. That like, that scripture is so me. Oh, wretched man that I am. Who can deliver me from this? Because I've been caught up in something that I should never have been caught up in the first place. Maybe had it been ahead a word, a sermon or something, it would have helped me to set me free. So now I've tried to put boundaries on, you know, not looking at pornographic materials or anything like that. But the worst case is that my mind has already become the pornography movie scene. That's what masturbation does. And I'm going to be so real with you because the thing is, some people will say it's good. It is this. It is that. It's not a sin. It's not that and that. But in my own experience, I realized that when I was trying to stop, I could not. I've made excuses for myself for real. I've told myself, maybe it's going to teach you self-control. You know, if you know how to masturbate, you can be able to control your erection and your arousal by yourself, you know, you are in charge because, you know, nobody, nobody can seduce you easily. Well, that was a myth and that was a lie. That was pure deception from the devil. I thought that it's going to help me with self-control. So maybe let me just use that. Since I could not stop masturbating, I made excuses for it. And then it was as if, oh, the self-control is going to come. So just relax, just chill. You can just keep doing it. It's going to give you self-control. And what did it do to me? It kind of put me on fire, like read a lot. Like being real, I would see a soap opera on the street and immediately I'm, I'm aroused. My erection just goes up. Woof. And then I could not even bear to look at. So now this is what it does. It already corrupted my mind that it has gotten my mind and scientifically it's proven, of course, the dopamine that is being released in excess has made it so easy for me to immediately get to arousal, immediately, like it's a click. So, seeing a soap opera, even to the extent of, you know, perverting my mind, that if I would look at um, the mannequin, the female mannequin that is being dressed, you know, for, for fashion, immediately I can visualize something sexual. Like I can easily, that's what it did to my mind. And I know I'm being too, raw here so sometimes it could look like and what scripture is it jesus said when you look at a woman lustfully you've already committed adultery with her so now it came so real that masturbation helps you to get to lust so easily masturbation kind of enhance your lust if i can use that word so i thought that it's going to help me run away from lust instead it helped me embrace lust in its totality like I would be lost in such that I wouldn't want to face a beautiful person that is attractive to me and look at them in the eye. Because what it's going to do to me, I wouldn't like it. So at this point, I'm already in a place that I knew I needed help. This is not something that somebody preached to me. It was a secret struggle. Nobody knew. I still went to church. I still performed my duties in church and did everything, but it was just so personal and a secret because nobody would ever know unless I say it out like I'm saying it out. 
But thank God that he delivered me. Because if he did not deliver me, how would I be able to even stand up and just say, Oh, God delivered me. Like, I've, I've made excuses for it. I'm just telling you, if you have made excuses for why you're masturbating, why you're watching porn, the devil will always try to deceive you to make excuses for your sin. But the truth is that sin is catalyst to more sin. You can never use sin to learn how to not sin. It's a lie. There's no way. But sin will always catalyze for, for you to sin more. So for you to say, I'm watching porn so that I can learn how to perform well in, in my marriage sexually. No, you don't need that. God already made you perfect. And the thing I saw here before as I was making this video is that the devil is after your mind. The Bible says your mind is the, is the battlefield. Like the, the warfare is spiritual. It's so spiritual that the devil wants to hijack your mind from you. Because once he gets you in pornography and masturbation, he keeps you in that place and tries to torment you. So I got there, of course, and it was tormenting. And like scripture says that the battle, the, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty through God to the destroying of every eye imagination and eye thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So seeing myself in that place was a place I, I never wanted to get to. But now I've made these excuses and then it didn't even work. And I've, I started making prayers because they say that if you, if you hate it too much, if you hate it that bad, you can stop it. If you hate it too bad, it's possible to stop it. So of course I hated it because of how it made me become, how moody it got, it got me and how weak it got me. Like in all areas, how loose it got me. So I got too angry with it and I started praying. <laughs> You know what, what religious people would call rugged prayers. <laughs> like, God, if I do this again, let me to jam you on the road. Like, <laughs> let me have an accident. Oh, God, forgive. Like, I thank God that God doesn't answer every stupid and silly prayer we make to him. Even when, because he knows our heart clearly. Like, he knows our heart and he sees how foolish we can be sometimes. So, like, religiously, I've tried to make these prayers to see if it's going to work. Let me, let me, you know, make this hard prayer to God. Then it didn't work. And I told God, God, if you do this for me, I will sing for you forever. I started making promises like Jephthah. God, if you do this for me, if you make me stop this, I will sing for you forever. I will, I will do this. I will save you forever. Yeah, it's a good prayer to make. But then it didn't still work. So now what was the way out? The truth is I was trying to do the right thing. But then I was approaching it the wrong way. Because any kind of addiction you are being held bondage to, God really wants you to be free. But your freedom, when it's based on your self-effort, when it's based on your ability, will only be something that you are only managing the addiction. Because I'm not, like, they are going to tell you, you know, engage yourself in exercises, get to do things that is going to, you know, get you distracted from this thing, this mindset and all of that. And they are all good things that are going to help you manage the addiction. But once in a while, you fall back into it because I tried many different things. I tried not to be alone. I tried to get myself engaged in activities and all of that. But um, yeah, I can go for like three months. And then before you know, it hits back. And that wasn't deliverance. It means it was just an addiction management. And a lot of people are managing the addiction and they felt like they have, con they have control over it. No, they don't. So I I, I knew that I didn't have control over it because when it hit back, it condemned me. I felt so bad. I felt condemned because I could not resist the temptation. And now, let me give you this, if this is going to be helpful. One of the tricks the devil uses on us Christians, because I believe a lot of Christians are watching me, and if you're not a Christian, yeah, one of the tricks the devil uses, because you're a human being and a child of God, God loves you. One of the tricks he uses is he will condemn you. And make you feel guilty. And, you know, with the religiosity of, that, that we are being surrounded with, it will make you hide whatever you're going through or struggling with. Because now, since it's a secret to you, now it's something you have to guard so well so that somebody will not get to know and expose you. So the devil will get you to a place that when the temptation comes, it makes you already feel guilty and tell yourself, Oh, I've already fallen. Because the thought came into your mind, oh, you need to do this masturbation, you need to masturbate now. And then 
you are trying to wrestle with it, immediately it's going to be like, I've already fallen. Since the thought already came, I've already fallen. So let me just do it, you know, go all the way in. And that was, I think that was a trick that got me because when I'm being tempted, immediately the guilt will come. Oh, why did you even feel that way? Why did you even feel that way? And all of that. And then I felt remorse, but the remorse doesn't change you. The worldly sorrow, and as Paul, Paul said it right, that there's a godly sorrow and there's a worldly sorrow, but this is not a video for it. Maybe in another video, I might have to explain that. So I got into this worldly sorrow that I'll beat myself, hit myself, hit, like literally beat myself up, trying to stop this. And that was just self-effort. Trying to stop this. And that was just me trying to use my self-will to see if this can stop. Because I was told where there is a will, there is a way. So since I have the will, I'm willing to change. But then, how is the way going to come when I don't have the power to change me? And that was it. I didn't have the power to change me. I could not even stop it. My, the, my arrogance as a human being, my pride as a human being was that when I want to stop it, I will stop it. If I want to stop it, I will stop it. If I want to stop this, I can stop this. And then I realized that I couldn't even stop it when I wanted to stop it. And if anybody's trying to paint my salvation to be like, it's good, it's good if you are not addicted to it. Where is the boundary that you will not be addicted to it? Is there like any line? Okay, you may not be addicted to it right now that you are still single. What if it happens inside your marriage? And there are other things that I would say that affect the, the, the future effect of masturbation that we don't see. Because masturbation may not have effect right now in your life, but it has a future effect in your marriage and in your life in general. So it, it, it has health effect also when you are, when you get addicted to it. But my line of argument is, is there a boundary that you will not be addicted to this thing because of the amount of dopamine that is released and now you feel so pleasured, you are so good because you can get yourself there, but then is this going to help you going forward? And Paul Apostle, you know, I read the scripture and I saw it clearly in Timothy as Paul was saying that in the later time, people will become lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And I feel like masturbation falls in that category voluptuous, the lovers of pleasure, that all we think about is to be entertained, to pleasure ourselves. And then this self-sex is part of this lover of pleasure because it kind of consumes you. Yeah, you're pleasuring yourself. It's helping you to, you know, try to get yourself in tune with your sexuality since you don't want to sleep around or if you're not even... But I feel like mostly, especially for Christian singles, we fall victim to this masturbation because we've already counseled out. I don't want to fornicate. I don't want to commit adultery. Or maybe as a married man, my wife is not around. I don't want to commit adultery. So let me just masturbate. So I know I've said a lot of things so far, but then I hope this has helped someone or this is going to help someone. This is my story. And it took the grace of God to deliver me. Now, this scripture is what I will give you in closing, I, I wouldn't be able to share all the story. I've told you how I beat myself up, like literally, and I said, I'm going to be raw. I literally, when, when I would get aroused and erected, I would try to beat my penis to go down, like, I mean, physical beating. So I know I'm being too raw here. Some people wouldn't, would, might say this, this was unnecessary to put, but I'm going to leave it here. I've tried, like I tried, I'm trying to tell you how much I tried because they said, if you hate it that bad, it's going to go away. But it didn't go away in my case. I hated it because of what it did to me. Got me loosed and all the silly promises made, it didn't even like, the promises were just fake and deception. So at the end of the day, I realized that I couldn't do this by myself and I needed the spirit of God. I think I heard a sermon and then the person was saying that if you want, if you are filled with the spirit, you know, it was explaining being filled with the spirit. And then the desires of the flesh, you disappear. And then that made me realize that to kill an addiction, since it, that, that addiction came to feel a need, a valid need. So you cannot just remove the addiction by trying to plug it out. You fit another thing. Like you don't neuter an addiction by trying to plug it out. You neuter it by nurturing in another habit, a healthy habit, maybe nurturing another thing. Like, 
For a Christian, you nurture getting filled with the Holy Spirit, which is not your own doing. So the, the preacher clearly explained that, and maybe in another video I might take time to talk about this. He talked about being filled with the Holy Spirit, and as you're being filled with the Holy Spirit, and he was doing an analogy of um, pouring a, a clean water into a dirty water, and then over, out, over pouring that clean water till it overflowed, and then it flowed till the dirty water escaped, and then everything in that bottle was now clean. So you do it by getting filled. If you want to to get an addiction out of you, it, it is not by trying to suck it out of you like, oh, this addiction, you have to go suck it out of you. Even when you pray, you must still be bound in it because that addiction came, you know, slyly to feel a valid need. There was, there was an underlying thing. I didn't feel loved. And this is me being real. I didn't really feel that loved. And I didn't, I didn't feel that acceptance. So when I started masturbating, it feels like, that dopamine release made me feel like, oh, like I've gotten what I wanted. So it can feel a need of rejection in someone or whatever thing. Maybe sexual abuse that happened to you made you feel not in control. Somebody took, you know, uh, somebody abused you and took what was yours without your permission. So now you have, you know, control. You are now in control of this one. You are in control of the act. You want this thing and you want to do it by yourself. So you see, it feel, it feel the valid need. And for everybody, it's different what got them there. It's different why they are still there or what got them addicted. But all I'm saying is that for you to get out of this, it will take you being filled with God. And then, so that knowing that you are not an addict, that you are not condemned. God hasn't condemned you. The scriptures in the gospel says, Jesus took your sins and gave you his righteousness and you are the righteousness of God in Christ. So I would even tell you, if you are still struggling with this right now, I know the devil is going to tell you, come on, come on, keep quiet. Come on, keep quiet. But this is how I got saved. Even when I would say I am the righteousness of God in Christ, it's the truth of the gospel. But then I still, in the midst of it, I would say I am the righteousness of God in Christ. My dear, the, the, the thought was battling. It was I was in a war. The, my mind is a battlefield. I was in a war of like keep quiet. You are an hypocrite. You are this or that. And I would be like, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. And over time, the desire because I'm feeding the focus of the love of Christ. How am I the righteousness of God in Christ? Is because He loved me so much that He came down to it and He died for me, paid the price for all my sins and the masturbation included. So now I am free. I am a new creature. All things have passed away. And now the core scripture, like I, I mentioned, I was going to give you, which I used personally was in Matthew chapter 5 that says, They that hunger and taste after righteousness shall be filled. Now in the word righteousness, there says equity of character and of act, morals and all of that. And I, on God for this because I knew that this masturbation has already perverse my mind and all of that. It it came in just clearly to destroy me. So I really was hungry for this righteousness and I was thirsty. I was craving for this. And what happened is that I did not understand the last part. He said, they that hunger and thirst for this shall be filled. But all I was doing was trying to fill myself by myself, trying to work on my self-effort. And until God opened my eyes to see that word shall be filled and realize that the feeling is not done by the person who is hungry and thirsty. It's done by an external force, which is that the Holy Spirit is not a force, but this is a personality that can fill you. And when the Spirit of God fills you, you cannot satisfy the lust of the flesh. It is not possible. And it is your place to open yourself up, Holy Spirit, feel me. And this last thing, and I've said like last thing two to three times. When God delivers you, he does not deliver you to go back and live your regularly scheduled life. He delivers you with a purpose in mind. When the devil came to take you, he took you because God had a purpose for you. So when God is delivering you like he delivered the children of Israel, that's the analogy I do like in Exodus. He delivered them and the reason was so that they would go and praise God. They would go and worship God. It is the same thing. When God delivers you, it is so that he can have your full attention. So that you will turn from being a lover of pleasure 
to becoming a lover of God. And I would say, when my deliverance from this addiction came, I was plunged into realizing how good God is, like how gracious God is, that he delivered me from this thing that that carried a heavy weight of shame around my head, that I was like, if you get to know this, how am I going to do it? Here am I sharing to the whole world, telling them, like, I was addicted to masturbation. And through God's help, because it wasn't my own doing, I was delivered from it. I really hope this video is helpful and will help you, if you're watching, to open up about your addiction. If you're struggling with this, I feel like the first step is, do not keep it hidden. Open up about it. Speak out about it. And let someone you can trust know. So that you can have someone to walk with you in this journey. I would like you in the comment section, don't be ashamed. Like I'm, I'm just sharing it like it is. I'm being so raw with you. So that if you are struggling with this, you will not have any shame but to come in there and tell us, look, I'm struggling with this also. And let's walk together and ask questions if you have real questions you want to ask. So that we can walk together and see God change you like he did for me because i believe like god did for me he can do it for you my brother and my sister and thank you so much for watching this video if you have not yet subscribed to this channel please do thank you and see you in my next youtube video Bye bye